Hello, I'm Sifu Cuddle, and in this video, we're going to be doing a warm up for Tai Chi Saber. Now, this is going to be a series of exercises that develop strength, flexibility, and spatial awareness with the weapon. So, I suggest you do this by itself a couple of times to just get comfortable with the warm up. And then, as you begin learning Tai Chi Saber, you can actually use this as your pre-workout or pre-training warm-up and it will help develop that strength that you need for grip strength and manipulating and holding the weapon and keeping blade uh, edge alignment correct as well as flexibility to be able to move correctly into each different tai chi position as well as in sparring context if somebody's trying to disarm you and they try to manipulate your blade you're able to recover and lastly spatial awareness because when we're doing forms training we are moving a blade around and you have to be comfortable in not only using and manipulating this extension of the body, but being able to do that and focus on your Tai Chi principles and fundamentals. So let's get to work. Now before we grab the saber, let's actually loosen up the joints of the body. More specifically, we're going to loosen up the wrists, elbows, shoulders, neck, and waist. So let's start with the wrists. Nice and simple, we're going to loosely clasp the hands together and then we're just going to circle them here. Keeping the fingers together like this keeps, uh, prevents your wrists from getting uh, twisted or whipped around too much as we do this because it's a really inconsistent motion and doing something a little too extreme could cause um, injury, of course, over a long period of time and practice doing this. So we want to keep it nice and light here. Now we're going to take our hands, clasp into fists, and then we're going to do slow circles. Now, as you do this, we really want to express the range of motion. So you want to go as far as you can around as we do this. And then switch directions. Again, trying to express that range of motion. And if you're hearing any kind of popping or crackling, take it easy. You don't need to overdo it. This is just the warm up. Okay. You don't want to cause any injury from doing too, going too hard on this for too long. Okay. Now let's focus on the elbows. Take the arms, hold them straight out. And then we're going to circle the hands inward and downward. Now you want to try to keep the elbow level with the shoulders as you do this and then keep the arms nice and light in motion. Now in the beginning for range of motion, you may feel like your hands are more out in front of your face. That's fine. But as you get more and more comfortable with this, you want to get your hands closer to your body. So we want to have our arms moving just kind of like propellers. Switch directions. Same idea here. Keep your elbows level and circle the arms upward and outward. Now from here, let's focus on the shoulders. We're going to have our arm nice and relaxed. We're going to circle upward. Stay nice and loose. You should feel all the blood go to your fingertips. It might get a little tingly. <laughs> Switch directions. And switch arms. We'll go again upward. And then from here, switch directions. Next, let's focus on the neck. We're going to do some simple circles. So we're just going to let our head tilt down, look up and down. Now, as you do this, I want you to think of not worrying about trying to tilt your head back and then around this way. Just think of taking your nose and drawing a circle in front of your face. So we don't need to tilt our head back, but just bring our head up and switch directions. Again, if you're, if you're hearing any crackling or popping, just take it easy. Go a little bit less extreme in your circle. This is something you want to add to your routine. So it'll improve the range of motion over time. And you just need to listen to your body during this phase and get comfortable with what you can do and where that's not going to overdo anything. Next, let's focus on the waist. So get your feet, hips distance apart, feet all the way down, knees slightly bent. And then we're going to turn, keeping the arms nice and relaxed and let the arms hit the body. 
Now, as we do this, try to not torque your knees. So don't let any twisting happen below the waist. Everything should be happening above the waist. So all of the turning is happening here and the stance stays neutral the whole time. All right, now that we got some blood flowing, now that we're nice and loose, let's go ahead and grab our sword and get into our regular warm up. Now let's actually grab the saber and we'll continue some warm up exercises. Now for these exercises, it's gonna be very stationary. So for your stance, stand with feet about hips distance apart, stay nice and relaxed, knees slightly bent and toes pointing forward, keeping your feet completely down on the ground. Now we're going to grip the saber with a full fist, nice and tight. And we're gonna think of trying to maintain a 90 degree angle right here. Uh, sometimes it will change, but that's a good base rule of thumb just to always correct yourself and look back on. Okay, now we're also going to take our left hand and we're going to grab our wrist. In Tai Chi Saber form, sometimes you will touch the wrist. So this is something we're going to keep exclusive to the warm up. You don't want to think of doing this all the time, but it's also going to help us with an idea of push and pull and as well keep us from moving our arm in too much of an awkward position or overextending ourselves. Okay, so grab onto that wrist. We're going to keep the blade pointing straight up, but the blade edge pointing straight forward. And for this first exercise, I want to extend in front of my body and then bring it all the way out to the side. Now, I'm not trying to turn and bring it past me here. I wanna keep it as far forward as possible. So as I do this, this motion, I wanna keep it moving in a straight line in front of my body, okay? So I'm going to come across here, blade edge pointing forward, all the way across to the other side. Think of pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling here. So pull, push, pull, push. Don't turn yourself too far. Just keep the arm out extended and forward. We're gonna go across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now from here, we're going to do the same idea, but up and down. As we do this, Think of opening a window. We're not trying to go over our head. We're not trying to pull and scoop back towards us. It's just as far as we can go, keeping it forward. Okay, and then for this, keep the blade edge forward. Same idea of pulling up, pushing down with our opposite hand. So again, up, one, down, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice and easy there. Now we're going to take it uh, and make it a little bit more fluid. So same idea with this push and pull, but now we're going to practice on bringing the blade across and changing it. So we're cutting now as we bring the blade over, not just trying to just move it in a straight line across. So now, same idea, I'm going to push as I bring the blade down low and across, keeping the tip pointing forward, and then turn my hand over so it's palm up, and then pull as I bring it back across. So now my hand should stay a little bit more loose, but the same idea of push and pull going down low. Okay, just think of moving from the tip of the sword from knee to knee. So we come across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now from here, we're going to go higher and we're starting and we're going to focus on bringing the sword further across. So we're all going to almost point side to side. You don't want to think of extending the wrist too much here. That's why we have our other hand bracing. So it'll be at a at pointing towards the corner of the room. So we come across here and here. Again, same mechanic 
I have my push and pull with my open hand, and I'm going to lead with the blade edge. So as I come across this way, my palm is down. As I come back, my palm is up. So one, two, all the way. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Last one we're going to do still upper, but now it's going to change one more time. Instead of just keeping our hands up high to do this, we're going to start cutting downward. Same idea though, I want you to keep your other open hand on your wrist. And then as we cut down, it's going to go across the body and we have to bring it next to us, bring it up by the shoulder and then cut down. Bring it next to you, cut down, next to the shoulder, 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 cut down. Now we wanna make this nice and loose. So cut down, cut down, shoulder, cut down, bring it up to the shoulder, cut down, up to the shoulder, cut down, up to the shoulder. And then as you get more and more comfortable with this, you can start making it a little bit faster, a little bit more loose as we cut down into the side. Now, this is where you have to be careful of spatial awareness. We don't wanna to go too much out to the sides next to us. And when we cut downward, we don't wanna accidentally hit the floor. So really pay attention to where you're pointing the blade. As I come down, if I let the wrist flex, I'm going to definitely hit the floor. If I keep my wrist in almost that 90 degree shape, it's not going to be even close. Only when I flip the blade over is it going to change the length of the reach of the sword. But I should have more reach forward than downward in this case. So we have down, one, down, two, down, three, down, four, down, five, down, six, down, seven, down, eight, down, nine, down, 10. Now let's do some moving exercises using our stances and doing some more Tai Chi technique. For this final part, you're going to need a little bit more space to move. You can always adjust depending on how much space you have. We're going to be stepping forward using our Tai Chi bow stance. So if you can only take two steps forward before you run out of space, that's fine. Just stop, turn around or move back, reset and keep going. Now this movement, we're going to uh, go in the opposite direction from our last downward cutting movement. We're now going to start cutting upwards. So this is the same path, just a different direction. Okay, now again, same thing. We keep our empty hand touching the wrist and then we'll take the blade and we'll start from one side of the body pointing down and cut upward to the other side. So instead of going next to our shoulder and then cutting down, we're going to go next to our foot and then cut up, down next to the foot and cut up, down next to the foot and cut up, down next to the foot and cut up. Okay, so Let's do this with our Tai Chi bow stance. I'm going to take the sword and I'm going to bring it down to my left foot, step forward with my right, and then as I shift forward, I bring it up to the right. Now, whatever foot is forward, the saber is going to come up to that side. So my right foot is forward, I'm cutting up towards my right side. Now from here, I bring it back, step, and then I'm going to cut up. My left foot is forward, so I'm going to cut to the left side. Bring it back, step, my right foot is forward, so I cut to the right side. Shift, step, cut. Okay, so same thing. Again, I'm going to start, it's easy just to think same side in starting position. I keep the sword pointing down to my left, step out with my right foot, cut upward towards the right, shift, step, Bring it up, shift, step, cut upward, shift, step, cut upward, shift, step, cut upward. 
Now, I suggest you take the time on this one. The goal is not to have a fluid circular motion. The goal is to have a constant circular motion, but at the timing of our step. So it's okay sometimes if you want to have this cut finish and then go into the next position, finish, and then go into the next position, finish, go into the next position, or you can have the sword match the timing of the feet, which is a little bit more advanced. So we step, come up, step, come up, step, come up, keep it moving, but also at the timing of your feet. This final exercise is more advanced, so it will take some time to get used to the motions, raising the leg, as well as bringing the sword around your head. But if you are more advanced, you're more skilled with the sword, you're more comfortable with moving it, this is a great addition that you can use to add to your warm up. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on bringing the blade around the body and cutting out in either direction. Now at the end, I am going to point the blade straight and my hand, my back hand is going to have the palm straight out to the side. So this is going to really depart from our hand attached to the wrist and the push pull idea. Let's start by raising our right leg and we're going to cut out towards the right, pointing directly to the right. Now from here, I point the blade down, touch the spine to my arm, bring it around from shoulder to shoulder and then I'm going to take a step back, slice horizontally and raise the leg at the same time, okay? Now from here, I'm going to step, bring the sword, think of slicing back horizontally, step around from shoulder to shoulder and then raise the right leg again as I point out towards the right. Step down with the right, over the head, raise the right and cut. Step down with the right, cut around the head, raise the right leg and cut. Step one, step two. Step one, step two. Step one, step two, step one, Step, two, step, one, step, two, step, one, step, two, last one, cut, and cut. Okay, so there you have it. I think this is a great warm up for Tai Chi Saber practice. Uh, when you're learning the Tai Chi Saber form, you can have a good warm up routine, as well as when you finish the Tai Chi Saber form, I think it's great because it does have some supplementary training that you're not gonna get specifically when you're doing just forms training. I also think this is a great way to practice before you even start learning Tai Chi Saber so you get more comfortable using the weapon. So all of these exercises are designed to develop that strength, the flexibility that you're gonna need and spatial awareness. Now, of course, a couple of the techniques get a little more advanced as we progress through. And if you're not comfortable in doing those at this point, that's fine. Just do what you're comfortable working with. And then as you pick up more uh, details as you pick up more techniques with the Tai Chi Saber, you can start adding the more advanced material to the end of your warm up. Hope you guys enjoy this one, and I'll see you in the next video.